like if you put the jumps up bigger, all of a sudden you start holding on more. So, you know, I wonder whether doing some jumping when the jumps are very low and just getting your own confidence about, um, you know, not having to hold on to come to the jump. And, I mean, another thing is, obviously, <coughs> it's hard to ride a horse forward to a jump if they won't wait for you. So, I mean, maybe some training stuff needs to go on with your horse so that you don't have to be holding on all the time. Uh, the other part that I think is important for all of us to work on is our position and getting confidence about staying on the horse without having to hold on with your hands. And so, you know, exercises like Becky was saying, I think would be helpful in developing a confidence and a feel about staying on your horse and not really getting too worried about holding on for your balance. I'm wondering, um, <coughs> as, as instructors, if any of you teach um, amateurs to look for distance or if you teach the quality of the approach and with good with a good approach that the jump kind of always works. Does that make sense? In my mind, um, it's more about getting the right canter, <coughs> riding the right line, and then trying to keep each stride once you're off the turn as level as possible. And to me, if you've got the right amount of power, you've ridden the right the good line and the horse keeps itself level, or you manage to keep it level, that's, you'll always, always get a comfortable jump. When you get the uncomfortable jump, that's because you've come off the corner, looked for the perfect stride that's never there, <laughs> and you start pulling, and you're looking for the stride, and by pulling you've killed the canter and you've killed the energy. Then all of a sudden you get to the fence and you've still not found that perfect stride. And then you come <coughs> to the fence, they've no power, you're swinging off the back of the teeth, and then they have to put this huge effort in to jump a very small fence, and that's when you get the woo shit feeling of slightly being left behind, which we've all had. And then the other uncomfortable feeling is when you think you've seen that perfect stride, but you've seen it, you've seen it too late. So you've come from nothing, you think you've seen that stride, and then you go from naught to sixty in the last three strides. He says that he ain't going to take off from that far away because he's no power still. So you've gone forwards looking for the photographers in that perfect two point <laughs> position. And he puts another stride and smacks you up the backside with the saddle. So I think that those are the really the only two uncomfortable jumping things that happen. And as long as, to me, the, the, the stride stays level and you've got enough power in that can to your load, it doesn't matter where they take off from to a certain level. Same, same. Same. Every stride is the same. Okay. Yeah, I keep it simple. Um, I, uh, I always talk about riding the horse rather than riding the fence. I think it's really important that you aren't worried about the jump you're coming up to, but as Ollie said, you have to have the right pace, the right balance, you get the right distance. So if you come in at the appropriate pace for the jump and you have the balance that's uh, <clears throat> required, you always get the right distance. And so I think it's more about riding the horse than it is riding the jump. And uh, if you keep riding the horses, as Ollie says, evenly, whether you're going fast or slow, but you don't slow down and speed up, you don't, you don't speed up and then slow down. You just quietly come in there, and then you can make that adjustment at the last, last minute. I've tried to think of jumping as, you know, make one decision. And if you make one decision, <coughs> that one's always okay. It's when you make the, two, the second and third decision. So what I mean by that is you keep your canter at the, the way you want it. And if you need to slow down, that's fine. If you need to speed up, that's fine. But if you slow down and then you sped up, that's now not okay. I think too, I mean, this is just expanding on your question a little bit, but it is so important to have produced the correct canter for the jump. And taking it a little further, we all have a fence, uh, either it's with a particular horse or maybe we're just scared of the type of fence, whether it's a tricaner or something, and that seems to be where we get the most fast at going to the fence because we think we gotta help them, you know, and that's where you get the horrendous slow down, speed up, slow down, trying to get the jump just so, so you don't screw it up, but you end up screwing it up even more. You know, for those, those jumps, that's what it's, it, the best thing you can do, it's your job as the pilot to, to make every question you present your horse with, you know, present it to them in the simplest way possible. And that is by giving them the right canter, the correct line to the fence, the correct speed, the correct balance, the correct rhythm, all these things we, we talk about. And if you, can, if you can make the right canter and you can maintain it to the fence, then that is the best thing you can do for your horse. So.
so they can do it better without us. <laughs> I think, um, you know, one of the big fallacies out there is that most people know how to see a distance. And I, there's very, very few people in the world who can get on a horse and see a distance <coughs> consistently all the time, every time, on every horse they ride. And so when I'm teaching people, again, like these folks are saying, you're teaching more about the quality of the canner than you are teaching about the perfect distance. If you have a good quality canner, it doesn't matter if you're three feet one way or the other. The jump is going to work. What I, I do take one step further is I do try to teach my students what a 12-foot stride is and how to canter down a line, that they need to know how to jump into a six stride line and that the canner that they have will create six strides or that the canner that they have will create five strides or four strides or whatever the exercise is. And we, did, we start out a lot of that with poles, but I think, especially in the show jumping, when you have related distances, and even in adult amateurs and kids need to learn for their course to put five in the four if they need to, or to put five in the five, they need to be able to start to understand that concept. And that has nothing to do with seeing a distance. It has to do more with the quality of the canner and the length of the stride of the canner. But I think that that's an important exercise to start to teach people right from the get-go. Hearing is everybody says you have to have the correct canner. Well, do you all know what the correct canner is? You know, I think that's, that's a big question. Uh, a horse has many, many different canners. And in the beginning, they only have one that they're actually any good at. But it's our job as trainers to give them many canners, uh, many different, as Amy says, many different lengths of canners and many different centers of his own gravity where he can sit back and, on his hind end more and be waiting in that canner so that you have more options when you go to the various types of jumps to determine what is the correct canner for that jump or for that exercise, that series of jumps. Um, it is true that we have to have the correct canner, but then there's a whole discovery part of one's education in jumping to understand what is the correct canner for this particular exercise. Um, and that all is based in cross country by the shape of the fence, what's behind that jump, what's around that jump, what your horse's reaction might be to that jump, whether the train is uphill or downhill, and it becomes uh, fact-finding part of your education to be able to understand lengths of strides, uh, distances between jumps, how different um, shapes of jumps affect the jump of the horse, how strong you should come to a jump, how up and down you should come to a jump, depending on what the jump is itself. So that's the part that's not necessarily seeing the distance, but that is a huge piece of the education of a rider that can happen off the horse so that your knowledge is better prepared so that you can do what um, Allison said, which is to present an exercise that could be difficult. You present it to the horse so it's actually easy for him because you have the knowledge to place him there for his ease.